I'm going to take you back to the golden age of piracy and introduce one of my favorite pirates to sail the high seas, Calico Jack Rackham. Welcome to the Poison Culture Podcast, where people of interest start our news. I'm your host, Cody Gregory. Rackham's life of piracy was short, yet fierce, but it left a lasting impact on the history of piracy. He operated in the Caribbean Sea during the early 18th century. He is known for his boldness, his flamboyant clothing, and his association with two of the most famous female pirates of all time, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed. Calico Jack was born in Bristol, England in 1682. His real name was John Rackham, but he was called Calico because of his love for bright colored clothes. Not much is known about his early life, but it is believed that he started his career as a sailor in the Royal Navy. He was eventually discharged from the Navy, though the reasons for this is not known. Some sources suggest that he was dismissed for drunkenness or insubordination, while others suggest that he was deserted. Regardless of the circumstances of his departure from the Navy, Rackham began to work as a pirate. The first record of him is as a quartermaster on Charles Vane's Brigadine Ranger in 1718, operating out of New Providence Island in the Bahamas, which is a notorious base for the pirates known as the Pirate Republic. Charles Vane was a notorious pirate who had a reputation for being cruel and violent. However, Calico Jack soon became dissatisfied with Vane's leadership. Vane and his crew robbed several ships outside of New York City, then encountered a large French man-of-war. The ship was at least twice as large as Vane's brigadine, and it immediately pursued them. Vane commanded a retreat from the battle, claiming caution as his reason. Jack Rackham quickly spoke up and contested the decision, suggesting that they fight the man-of-war because it had plenty of riches. In addition, he argued if they captured the ship, it would place a much larger ship at their disposal. Of the approximately 91 men on the ship, only 15 supported Vane in his decision. Vane declared that the captain's decision was considered final, and despite the overwhelming support for Rackham's cry to fight, they fled the man of war. On November 24, 1718, Rackham called a vote in which the men branded Vane a coward and removed him from captaincy, making Calico Jack the next captain. Rackham gave Vane and his 15 supporters the other ship in the fleet, along with a decent supply of ammunition and goods. Jack quickly made a name for himself as a ruthless and daring pirate, cruising the Leeward Islands, Jamaica Channel, and the Windward Passage. One of Jack's most famous exploits was his capture of a merchant ship called the Kingston in 1719. The Kingston was carrying a wealthy passenger, Don Pedro de Cordoba, and a cargo of gold and jewels. Rackham and his crew took the ship by surprise and quickly overpowered its crew. They plundered the ship's cargo, which is worth about an estimated 30,000 pounds, and made off with de Cordoba as a prisoner. De Cordoba was eventually released after a ransom was paid. There's a great account of Jack in the book, A General History of Pirates. It reads as, Rackham and his men were at a town in Cuba refitting their small sloop when a Spanish warship charged him with patrolling the Cuban coast. It entered the harbor along with a small English sloop which they had captured. The Spanish warship saw the pirates but could not get to them at low tide, so they anchored in the harbor entrance to wait for morning. That night, Rackham and his men rowed over and captured the English sloop and overpowered the Spanish guards there. As dawn broke, the warship began blasting at Rackham's old ship, now empty, as Rackham and his men silently sailed past in their new prize. A crazy tactical move that worked, something that you'd probably see in a movie. Calico Jack was known for his flamboyant clothing and his boldness. He had a distinctive style of dress, which included a red coat, a black hat, and colorful breeches. He was also known for his love of women, and he was often seen in the company of prostitutes and female pirates. He accepted the king's pardon in 1719 and moved to New Providence, where he met Anne Bonny, who was married to sailor James Bonny at the time. Anne Bonny had a reputation for being fearless and ruthless. He was immediately smitten with her and started having an affair with her. James Bonney learned about the relationship and brought Anne to Governor Woods Rogers, who ordered her whipped on charges of adultery. Rackham offered to buy Anne in a divorce by purchase, but James Bonney sternly refused. This caused Anne to flee to Nassau and run away with Rackham. A few months later, Calico Jack met Mary Reed, 
another female pirate who had disguised herself as a man and had been working on a pirate ship for several years. Calico Jack was fascinated by her story and invited her to join his crew. The trio of Calico Jack, Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed became one of the most notorious pirate crews of all time. They raided ships on the coastal towns alongside the Caribbean Sea, and their daring exploits made them feared and respected by other pirates. A victim of the pirates, Dorothy Thomas, left a description of Reed and Bonnie. She said, They wore men's jackets and long trousers, and handkerchiefs tied around their heads. And each of them had a machete and a pistol in their hands, and they cursed and swore at the men to murder her. Thomas also recorded that she knew that they were women, from the largest of their breasts. In September 1720, Bohemian Governor Woods Rogers issued a proclamation declaring Rackham and his crew pirates. Although it was not published until October 1720. After publication of the warrant, pirate hunters Jonathan Barnett and former pirate Jean Bonadivis started in pursuit of Rackham. Rackham was cruising around Jamaica, capturing small fishing vessels and terrorizing fishermen along the northern Jamaica coastline. Rackham's sloop was laid at anchor and fired a gun which caught the attention of Jean's sloop. Jean reported this to Barnett who sailed to investigate the sloop. At 10 p.m., Barnett called out to the sloop and inquired who they were. The reply was, John Rackham from Cuba, and Barnett immediately ordered him to strike his colors. Barnett testified that because of it being so dark he could not identify who, replied that they would not surrender, and fired a swivel gun at Barnett's sloop. Barnett ordered a broadside which destroyed the boom on Rackham's ship, and his crew called for quarter. Barnett had the men put ashore at Davis Cove, where Major Richard James, a militia officer, placed them under arrest. Rackham and his crew were brought to Spanish Town, Jamaica in November 1720. Calico Jack, Anne Bonny, and Mary Reed were all sentenced to death by hanging. However, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed were both pregnant at the time, and their executions were delayed. Mary Reed died of a fever while in prison, and Anne Bonny's sentence was eventually commuted to imprisonment. Calico Jack, however, was not so lucky. He was hanged in Port Royal, Jamaica on November 18, 1720, along with several of his crew members. His body was left to hang in a gibbet as a warning to other pirates. It is said that his body remained there for several years before it eventually fell into the sea during a storm. There is no record of Bonnie's release, and this has fed speculation as to her fate. There is a ledger that lists the burial of an Anne Bonnie on 29th of December, 1733, in the same town in Jamaica where she was tried. In the book A General History of Pirates, Charles Johnson writes, She was continued in prison to the time of her lying in and afterward reprieved from time to time. But what is she become of her since we cannot tell? Only this we know, that she was not executed. Other sources have stated that she may have returned to the United States after her imprisonment, dying in South Carolina in April of 1782. Calico Jack's death marked the end of his brief but notorious career as a pirate. However, his legacy lives on as one of the most famous pirates in the golden age of piracy. His boldness, his flamboyant clothing, and his association with two of the most famous female pirates of all time, Anne Bonny and Mary Reed, have made him a popular figure in pirate folklore and popular culture. The flag commonly associated with Rackham depicts a white skull above two cross swords on a black background and Rackham is sometimes credited with inventing or designing the Jolly Roger design altogether. At a trial, however, no witness described Rackham ever using such a flag, only noting that his sloop flew a white pendant. The skull and cross swords design likely dates to the early 20th century, and attaching it to Calico Jack can be traced to a 1959 book by Hans Leap. Probably one of the most notable depictions of Jack, at least for me, is the TV show Black Sails. Jack Rackham is a fictionalized version of the historical pirate, played by Toby Schmitz. He is portrayed as a cunning and charismatic pirate who becomes one of the main characters in the series. In the show, he is depicted as being intelligent and shrewd, with a talent for negotiation and a strong sense of loyalty to his crewmates. As the series progresses, Jack becomes more ambitious and sets his sights on becoming a captain himself. He forms an alliance with the pirate Anne Bonny, played by Clara Paget as they work together to try to achieve their goals. One of the most interesting aspects of Jack's character in Black Sails is his relationship with Anne Bonny. 
In the show, they are depicted as being close friends and occasional lovers, with Jack often deferring to Anne's more aggressive and ruthless tactics. Overall, Jack Rackham is a complex and multi-dimensional character in Black Sails, who evolves throughout the series from a supporting character to a major player in the world of piracy, much like the real Jack Rackham in the Golden Age of Piracy. If you ever get a chance to watch Black Sails, I highly recommend it. One of the best shows I've ever watched. Well, that's my little history lesson on the pirate Jack Rackham. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Poison Culture Podcast. You can find me on Instagram at Poison Culture Podcast, and as well on YouTube. Again, I'm your host, Cody Gregory. And until next time, stay spooky.